All right, Mr. Rader, I need to find out more information. On that particular day, the 15th day of January, 1974, can you tell me where you went to kill Mr. Joseph Otero? Mm, I think it's 1834. It's more. All right. Can you tell me approximately what time of day you went there? Uh, somewhere between 7 and 7.30. This particular location, did you know these people? No, that's... Uh, no, that was part of my, uh, I guess, my what you call fantasy. These people were uh, selected. All right. So you... You were engaged in some kind of fantasy during this period of time? Uh, yes, sir. All right. Now, when you use the term fantasy, is this something you were doing for your personal pleasure? Uh, sexual fantasy, sir. I see. So, you went to this residence, and what occurred then? Well, <clears throat> um, I had uh, did some thinking on what I was going to do to uh, either Mrs. Otero or Josephine and uh, basically broke into the house or didn't break into the house but uh, when they came out of the house I came in and confronted the family and then we went from there. What happened then? At that time I tied him up. While still holding him at gunpoint? Well, in between tying and yes. Yeah. All right, after you tied them up, what occurred? Well, uh, they started complaining about uh, being tied up and I re re-loosened the bonds a couple of times. Uh, tried to make Mr. Otero as comfortable as I could. Uh, apparently he had a cracked rib from a car accident. So I had him put a pillow down for his head. They, uh, you know, they talked to me about uh, uh, you know, giving the car and whatever money. I guess they didn't have very much money. And uh, the, uh, there I realized that uh, you know, I was already I didn't have a mask on or anything. They already could ID me and uh, made, a, made a decision to go ahead and, and put him down, I guess, or strangle him. All right. What did you do to Joseph Otero? I put a plastic bag over his head and then some cords and tightened it. And this was in the bedroom? Yes, sir. Did he, in fact, uh, suffocate and die as a result of this? Not right away. No, sir, he didn't. What happened? Uh, well, after that, I, uh, I did miss this Otero. Uh, I had never strangled anyone before, so I really didn't know how much pressure you had to put on a person or how long it would take. But Was she also tied up there in the yes, bed? Yes, uh -huh. yeah, both their hands and their feet were tied up. She was on the bed. Where were the children? Uh, well, uh, Josephine was on the bed and uh, Junior was on the floor at this time. So we're, we're talking, first of all, about Joseph Otero. So you put the bag over his head and tied it, mm -hmm. and he did not die right away. Can you tell me what happened in regards to Joseph uh, He moved over real quick, like, and I think tore a hole in the bag, and I could tell that he was having some problems there. But at that time, the, the whole family just went, uh, they went panicked on me, so I, I worked pretty quick. I, I got what did you, uh, you worked pretty quick. Well, what I mean, I, 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 I strangled <coughs> Mrs. Otero. And she went out, or passed out. I thought she was dead. She passed out. Then I strangled uh, uh, Josephine. She passed out, or I thought she was dead. And uh, then I went over and uh, put a, uh, and then uh, put a bag on uh, uh, Junior's head. And uh, and then, uh, if I remember right, uh, Mrs. Otero came back. She came back and... Uh, Sir, let me ask you about Joseph Otero Sr. You senior. indicated he had torn a hole in the bag. Mm -hmm. and what did you do with him then? I put another bag over it. Or either that or a... If I recollect, I think I put a uh, either a cloth or a t-shirt or something over it, over his head and then a bag, another bag. And did, then he down. did he subsequently die? Well, yes.
Maybe you were just born bad. How Boy, do you... I don't know about you. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. No, I wasn't born bad. You guys got it. See, I'm trying to tell you, man, they lied. They lied so bad to you all. But you've been convicted of killing seven men. Everybody's looking at the number. Does that not... You, you killed well, seven men, seven strangers. Does that not make you a serial killer? So I didn't kill them every day, did I? Did I go out there every day and say, mm, I'm going to kill If I did, there would well, be Well, no, it took you 12 months. Yeah, and, it, and, and that's a hell of a lot of men I went through before the next jerk came along and I used protection, like a condom. So it was, self, it was self-defense? Yeah. Well, the first one, perhaps, the second, maybe, but so seven what? times? So what? Bitter, evil, angry, have never been before in my life. Worse than even out there with those men. This is evil, what those people have done to me. Do you feel anger or even hatred towards men? I never hated men, but now I do. I hate those male... God. I hate those male... cops. Real bad, because they're... The cops, the judges, the lawyers, they're all male. There's no sense in having me tormented for the rest of my life when I don't deserve to be tormented. So I did what anybody else would do. And so there's only clemency or the chair. You make your pick, people, because that's the only way it's going to be. Do you want to die? You want to? Oh, man, if I, if I was to uh, leave this planet, it wouldn't be no big deal to me, because uh, this is a wicked, wicked world. Wicked world. I'm a serial killer. I've killed eight women, six in this state, and two in New York. I'm not a big serial killer, by the way. Eight, eight people, that's nothing. I mean, there's, there's a lot of other guys you can go see. I saw this woman walking along the road with a uh, stroller. Uh, I pulled off the side of the road. Um, she came into the driveway, walked up the driveway. I was behind the house. Um, she saw me and I grabbed her. I told her that if she didn't do what I, I wanted that I would smash the baby's head against the wall of the house. Um, where I think that's important is I've always said that uh, I never understood why the women never really resisted me. I never, I'm not a big strong guy. Nobody ever seen to fight. I raped her. Strangler, I left her for dead. The only reason she's not dead is uh, has nothing, nothing to do with me. Right? So, when I attacked her, I don't believe I was in control. I don't think I could have stopped. Um, reason I say that is because there's a very clear point to me after she was dead, when I was feeling, well, I didn't really feel anything. I mean, I knew what was going on, and and I saw what was going on. But it was more like watching an old film that we used to see as kids in the high school. You would think that if you killed somebody, that you would have that face imprinted in your mind and that you wouldn't be able to get it out of your mind. I don't have that. I never had that. The only, only face that I can see is what was in the newspapers a few days later when they, were, when they were missing. You know, like the high school picture, anybody know where this girl is type thing. That's the picture I see. I don't see them as they were when I killed them. I can't see them as I was killing them. When I say I don't have any remorse, that doesn't mean that I don't have any regrets, that I don't wish that didn't happen, that there was something I could do to bring them back or anything. It's just that I don't have any feelings towards them. I don't feel, I feel like I should be tormented by, by, by what they looked like when I was killing them or by tormented by what was happening immediately before I killed them and stuff. And none of that's there. None, none of that's there at all. Thank you.